Hey Luke here with CatsAndCarp.com and I'm in Kentucky with Steve Douglas and we are catching big old fat carp, big old Asian carp, big head carp and silver carp. Having a ball doing it. Check that out. Get him in the live well. <laughs> in this video we're going to show you how we're catching Asian carp on rod and reel. We're going to show you how we're cleaning them and we're going to show you how to cook these delicious fish. Because silver carp and big head carp, also known as Asian carp, are plankton feeders, people think you can't catch them on a rod and reel with bait. But this isn't true. Over in China and Thailand, they're a major game fish. They catch them on specialty baits, specialty gear, and I want to do it too. So I've contacted Steve Douglas, a good friend of mine, who has a, a great YouTube channel about catfishing. He lives out in Kentucky. And me and him are going to get together and we're going to go target big head carp and silver carp and see if we can't catch them on rods and reels using bait. In preparation for my trip, I went and bought some big head carp bait. This is a bait manufactured by Maruku, which is a Japanese bait manufacturing company. And it's sold by WackerBaits.com here in the U.S. I bought some Asian carp rigs off amazon.com and you can see here it's got a little plastic ball that you shove a bunch of uh, this like doughy bait in and it breaks up into a cloud of particles and the fish inhale the little hooks that dangle around it and that's the theory behind this and there's a different design here where they have a spring that holds the dough in place and then the little hooks but you'll notice all the hooks have a little foam beads on them this is to make the hooks neutrally buoyant so they fly into the fish's mouth here's a rig that I made myself um, from some parts I got on Amazon.com and you can buy special little foam beads just for this from WackerBaits.com or you can use a block of styrofoam and pick the beads off yourself. I also bought a whole bunch of casting spoons because I've heard stories about people catching big head carp in the mouth using casting spoons. So I've got the gear, I've got the bait, I've done the internet research. Now let's go see if I can actually catch a fish. Okay, I got done with court. I'm in my car. I'm in Northern Virginia and I'm about to drive 22 hours round trip to go fishing for a carp I've never seen before, using rigs I've never used before, using an experimental bait. It's going to be awesome. All right, Operation Slimy Thunder, it's green to go. Let's do this. A few short hours after arriving in Kentucky, I watched the sunrise from the boat ramp on the Cumberland River, just beneath the Barkley Lake Dam. Steve Douglas and his wife Lisa piled me in the boat and headed upstream to show me their little honey hole right beneath the dam. As soon as we got there, you could see carp floating all over the surface with arrow holes in them, and you could tell that bow fishermen had just been all over this place. But as soon as we arrived, the fish finder was blacked out with huge schools of carp. They were down deep and tightly packed together. It just got my blood racing. I was so excited. I left some of it in the car, but this is all the bait I brought. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now, these are all particle baits. Okay, so we've got breadcrumbs, powder milk, instant mashed potatoes. We've got grits, cream of wheat. All right, we got another one, and this right here says mashu potato. So, <laughs> mashu potato, which is mashed potatoes in Japanese. This, which is, is um, it's emo fiber, or sweet potato fiber. Uh, so emo is Japanese for sweet potato. So this is a binder. So what it is, is you how, how the bait breaks down is super important. Uh, if it breaks down too quickly, your hook goes bare too fast. Right. Doesn't break down fast enough, you get no chum floating in the water to attract the fish. And so the, the the potato fiber is a way of affecting the binder. What we got? So I've got one recipe using the the, the official big head silver or carp baits, and then I've got my do it myself Walmart baits. So I'm going to do one of each okay. and see if we can't see what we can do. We're going to try just the mashed potatoes first. My rig was really simple. I had one of these weighted pole floats on one of my catfishing rods, and then I had to tie one of the Asian carp rigs, and I would test it in the water to make sure the foam beads weren't causing the hooks to float. If everything was good, then I'd pack a ball of the mashed potatoes or some various mixture around there and uh, we had to experiment a bit to try to find something that would break down but not break down too quickly. 
We were fishing these rigs about 15 to 20 feet down to put them right in the middle of that school. But it didn't take very long before we got to see a really impressive sight. That's so cool. The Barfy Lake Dam has huge locks for industrial barges to go up the river into the dam. And when a barge comes in and the water gets pumped out of the lock, the water gets pumped out right where we are fishing. So when that siren gets off, you have only about a minute to get out of the way before this calm water turns into a raging torrent with jumping carp all over the place. This torrent would last about 10, 15 minutes and seemed to repeat about once every hour or two. It also provided me with my first up close view at a big head carp, but it also taught me that the carp were in here thick, really thick. Well, look at the top of his head. Yeah, he hit that concrete, didn't he? That looks like a prop to me, though. <laughs> nice. As soon as the water calmed down, it was back to business and it didn't take long to get my first bite. But it wasn't really what I was expecting. Yeah. Oh, gar. What? what? <laughs> you got that on film, Lisa. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that, he ate it. He ate yeah, it he did. All right. Yep. Uh, yep. Watch them hooks. Oh, I know, those hooks are nasty. Oh, what a snarled mess. <laughs> oh, you piece of poop. <laughs> you see that? He was off and he went and dived across your boat and rehooked himself. I know he... Yeah. Ha! Got it? See that? And that's how you catch a gar, right there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I never would imagine it. So apparently foam beads and mashed potatoes will catch gar. <laughs> Everything I'd heard about fishing for big head carp said that they were extremely delicate biters, that they would just barely, barely nibble the bait, and so you needed a super sensitive float, which I didn't really have. This float I had was a really big chunky one, but still you could see tons and tons of nibbles and bites and times when the carp were hitting the line. And so you just had to set the hook a whole bunch. And the vast majority of the time, there would not be anything on it. It was really frustrating. So I could feel tons of carp hitting the line. I could see tons of carp, but just really wasn't getting hookups for quite some time. Oh, got one, honey. Got one. Yeah. Got one. Oh, son of a gun. Oh, that was a trip. You had him out there. Yeah, I did. Where's that other line coming? Dang it. That one was on, man. He was on, wasn't Yeah, it? yeah. And that was, that wasn't a gar. Oh, look at that, man. I'm missing one. He broke me off. What pound of taste is that? No, it looks good to me. We hooked one. We, we hooked one. We hooked one. You don't know whether he was snagged or, or what, but I saw my bo bobby go peck, 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 and then it went down. Oh! Oh! There's something on there. Yeah, it feels small though. Feels like a gar or something. Oh! <laughs> he bit one. Look at that. Right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you better watch that. So many, between the spines and the hooks. <sighs> Woo. Okay, hold him closer to the camera. <laughs> good 40 pounder. Ah, your bait's good for catfish. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Steve, you're a catfishing machine. You can't turn it off. You can't know? turn it off, just, huh? Look at his meat. Look at that weird. That's why I've never seen one do that before. That's weird. What's he 
got? His meat is rolling or something. Oh, he's, he's like belly dancing. Too. Yeah, you see that? I've never seen one do that before. <laughs> oh, you got one. Eh? At least you got that takedown already. Yeah, I can't. Blue cat. Good 20 pounder right there. Yeah, yeah 20, 20 pounder. I got really big hands. That's why it looks small. He <laughs> will be one of these days. After half a day of catching blue catfish and gar, we decided to switch over to the spoons and see if we couldn't catch some carp using spoons. Yeah, I guess you're gonna call it. Oh, oh, there we go. You yeah, I got one. Oh, oh, dude. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Finally. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. That's your first Kentucky <laughs> big head car. Right? Is that a big head or a silver? I think it's a big head just because of the size of it. There's a way to tell and I'm not savvy with it, but just the size of him, I think he's... He's got an ugly face, ain't he? Oh, you're talking about the fish? Or? Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow, this was such a rush. We had so much fun catching carp on these half ounce, one ounce spoons. While most of the carp we caught were snagged, three of the carp were hooked in the mouth, or at least in the lips. And at least one carp hit the lure on the drop in the mouth. So while we might have just been lucky, it seems like there's a possibility that occasionally these carp will hit spoons. Either way, we were catching them hand over fist. Mm, putting up a good part. Is it? Oh, well, I... And the chin. And the chin. That's yeah. close. I mean, that's, you know, you'll hit bass like that. Yeah. Another one in the live well. They're still living in that live well. Oh, look at that. Oh, you got him in the mouth, too? Yeah, yeah. Look, well, that's proper in the mouth. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh man, this is so much fun. Even yeah. watch you catch it, so much fun. Yeah, look at that bend in that rod. Look at that. It's just like, oh, I'm glad I brought these rods. Oh. Oh, oh man, you had him. You know, I horsed him too much. He was in the middle. Yeah, well, we got him. He don't know he's hooked, though. <laughs> That's a, my experience has been with big catfish. That must be just about to get crazy. <laughs> yeah, when, they, when they're so big they don't know, then yeah. you know it's going to get nuts. Right. <laughs> I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to catch these on rod and reel. Father in heaven be with my fishing rod, protected in this time of need. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, mercy. Yeah, see, I don't know why you fish for those trash fish. I mean, that's what's, what's yeah. where's, the, where's the fun in that? Yeah. Where's the fun in them trash fish? <laughs> oh, that's a 40 pounder, ain't it? Ooh, wee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a 40 pounder, ain't it? <laughs> that is a big boy. Guys, I don't know why you wouldn't want to catch some of these on a rod and reel. Look at that thing. Oh, that side's a little covered in powder milk, though. <laughs> oh, it. We're going to eat some of these fish, guys. Yeah? We're going to try to eat some of them. Now, my wife's right now, she's at the store buying soy sauce and ginger, man. I'm gonna... Now, you're going to get all fancy with them. I'm going to have to do a little southern, southern fried carp. Is Asian carp? you got to go Asian, man. You know? <laughs> you know, when in Rome and all that. Nah, I'm going to smoke it, man. Yeah, man. And they stay alive good in the live well. I can't, I can't get over there. Well, that's Look a good thing, them. too. Now, that one there just got put in there. Let's look at these other ones. Yeah, he might. He, his gills are bleeding. Woo! They're trying to come up out of there.
One quirky thing about these Asian carp is they like to turn and charge the boat in the middle of the fight. So occasionally you'd be playing them and all of a sudden the line would go slack and spring loose and you'd think you'd lost the fish and it was just them running towards the boat. Crazy. Crazy That's fish. Fight, Look at that mouth. It's just weird. All right. I have never seen as many bow fishermen as I have during this trip, and they were right on top of our gear. The entire time we had bow fishing boats coming right up to us and circling us and hanging out right there, watching us have the time of our life. Oh, uh, hold on. Yep. Oh. Looks hooked up. <laughs> While this trip ended up turning out a little different than I anticipated, I can't remember the last time I had this much fun catching this many huge fish. It was absolutely amazing. Luke, I'm glad you talked me into this. <laughs> I mean, I don't always think what you wanted to hit them, but Lord, corrupting naive young catfishing. Yeah. Into my dirty carp fishing ways. Yeah. <laughs> there it goes. Yep. All right, guys. Asian carp. We're going to clean them and see what they taste like. Put some up on them too. Just right back here. You know, the thing that gets me is we're sitting here catching these. We watched, well, maybe half a dozen bow fishermen at least yep. coming in there. The whole time we had bow fishermen all over the place. I saw maybe one or two fish taken by bow fishermen. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, and and, uh, and they sit and watch us catch them and have the biggest, funnest time catching them, and they still wanted to fish for with a bow. <laughs> it's crazy. We, we've got 15 fish here, just two guys using some spoons and rods and reels. Yep. And we tore it up more than all the bow fishermen combined. And had twice as much fun doing it. Oh, absolutely. There are some big, healthy fish, man. I'm telling you. And they're going to take a little more to this trip was a good reminder of why I mostly do catch and release fishing. Cleaning about 200-300 pounds of fish is a lot of work. Let me show you how we filleted these Asian carp. So go down behind the pectal fin, get a nice sharp knife to get through that tough skin, then turn the, the blade about 90 degrees and start working down the backbone. Uh, you, you kind of you'll hit the rib cage and then once you get past the ribs you go all the way through the fish and then work it all the way down to the tail. The ribs are really thick, so you can't cut through them like you can on a trout or salmon. So you just peel the fillet back and, and fillet the, the meat off the ribs. And once you get about halfway down the ribs, the meat gets so thin it's not worth going down any further. And you just cut the fillet off. And uh, you'll get this nice uh, strip of meat. But remember, when using these fillet knives, be really careful. Ouch! Oh, big wide open. I don't think I got enough band aids for that. You're gonna have to get stitches. That knife is sharp. Yeah. Listen, I've got some serious gauze in the car or somewhere. That knife really did a number on Steve's leg and hit a major artery, too. And Steve just slapped some gauze and electrical tape on that thing and just kept flaying fish. And it wasn't until his socks started filling up with blood that his wife was able to convince him to go get stitches. But uh, yeah. What a day. Holy mackerel. I've got so many fish in that cooler. I about broke my back getting it in the back of a car. Steve, unfortunately, is off to the hospital to go get stitches. He just sliced his leg open with a fillet knife. And uh, it definitely needs looking after. There was a lot of blood in his socks. So hopefully uh, Steve will make a speedy recovery. And uh, I've got 11 hours to drive back to Virginia. Now I gotta go cook some carp. So I left Kentucky around 7 p.m. and rolled into Northern Virginia around 8, 9 a.m. 
and immediately popped open the cooler and started cleaning up the fish. And what you'll see here is I didn't do a good job washing the fillets and the blood turned the fillets pink. So you had to scrub them to kind of get that flavor out. But let me tell you a little bit about filleting these carp. They have two sets of Y bones. So if you're looking at the fillet, this is what it looks like. The Y bones kind of stick out of the meat a little bit. So you do is you cut down the center of the fillet lengthwise, and then you've got to cut out these long strips of meat around the Y bones. And it's, it's a bit tedious and takes a bit of work. Depending on how you cook the fish, you may or may not need to do this. So first step is you take the skin off. And I'm horrible at this, and every time I do it, I end up missing a bit and having to go back and take it off. So uh, then you go and cut it lengthways down the seam and start trimming off the red meat. A lot of people don't like this meat because it's got a little bit of a dirtier, fishier flavor. Once the red meat is gone, cut off the piece of the fillet that's over the rib cage. You'll feel that it doesn't have any bones in it. So that's a good boneless piece of meat right there. Next, Feel for the Y bone sticking out of the fillet and make an incision on either side of this row of Y bones. Then use that as a starting point to try to work the meat off those Y bones. And it'll take a lot of work and you'll notice that the structure of the Y bone changes as you go down the length of the fillet. So you kind of got to feel your way around it, but they're pretty thick bones. So it makes it easy to find them and, and fairly simple to see where they are at and you can feel them with the knife pretty well. Once you're done, you'll repeat the process with the second half of the filet. But you'll find you'll get bigger chunks of meat off the top part of the filet. Okay, now I'm going to show you an awesome recipe for coconut carb nuggets with a mango sauce. Take some of this naked mango juice and boil it and reduce it down. So get that water out of it. Once it's boiled and thickened up, you're going to start adding spices to it. Um, you start with some cayenne pepper, however much you like. If you are a spice person, you can go heavy handed. We're not really spice people, so just a couple dashes does us. Then you want some ground cumin, and I go pretty heavy handed with the cumin. And then some bay leaves, about three bay leaves works really well. And you want that to simmer for about 20, 30 minutes to really get the flavor out of the leaves into the, in there. Ground uh, cloves is great, but go sparingly on it. A little cloves goes a long way. And this makes an awesome, awesome sauce. And it looks a lot fancier than it really is. And you just eyeball everything. If you accidentally add too many spices, just add some heavy whipping cream to kind of cool the flavor down a little bit. Next, you're gonna wanna marinate your meat in buttermilk. And I like to marinate it for at least 30 minutes, but I can do a couple hours. Then take some peanut oil and put it in a deep pan and get yourself about an inch and a half of oil and put it on kind of a, a low heat and then get yourself either some rice flour or tapioca flour and put it into a, a shallow dish. Take some sweetened coconut and do about a one to one coconut to flour. Mix it all up and then you're gonna add some eggs to it to make your batter. You can also add some sugar to this if you like a little bit sweeter uh, food. At any rate, about six large eggs will do the job, but you basically mix up these eggs until you get a nice, thin, runny batter. Something and that will kind of level itself out and move around like a liquid, but still pretty thick. So you can see about this consistent. Next, you're going to want to get a shallow dish and put some plain old bread flour or all-purpose flour in it. And you're going to form a little assembly line. You're going to have the meat out of the marinade, then you have roll it in the flour, and then you're going to roll it in the batter. And then you're going to take it over to the peanut oil and fry it. It should turn golden brown in about two to three minutes. That's kind of perfect temperature. Then you have these beautiful nuggets and you dip them in that mango sauce and it is absolutely fabulous. It's really quick. It's a lot easier than it seems and it blows people's mind. So Bacon, what do you think of the carp? It's good. You like it? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> oh, what? Never mind. Oh, look at that, oh. Nathan. You liking the carp? Yeah. Mm. So what do you think, Mom? It's a very mild tasting fish. Nice. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to debone the carp fillets, then smoke them. Now here's a really great smoke recipe. Take a gallon of soy sauce and about a pound of ginger. ginger. Cut the ginger thin and put it in with the soy sauce. Then take about 20 cloves of garlic, add it into the pot as well. Then you're going to want about four cups of sugar and about a gallon of water and this is gonna make a kick butt brine for smoking fish. It's a teriyaki flavored brine. Super easy to make, only takes a few minutes. Boil it for about 10, 20 minutes to get all the flavors mixed and then let it cool down. 
Then cut up the fish into nice chunks and pour the cooled brine all over the fillets so that everything's kind of floating. It doesn't have to be deep, it just has to be covering everything. Let your meat soak in the brine for about a day and then take it out and put it in the smoker. Two rows of carp in here. Two rows of carp in there. More carp in there. And then we've got the element with apple wood chips. Smoke your fish for about eight hours if you want a really soft meat. Smoke it for about 24 hours if you want something more like jerky. And you want the temperature between about 120 to 175. And this is what beautiful Asian carp fillets look like after about 20, 24 hours of smoking. Gorgeous color, beautiful flavor. Oh, that's good. That's really good. These Asian carp are delicious. They fight hard, they're fun to catch, and there's lots of them. It's time to turn lemons into lemonade and enjoy them. They're an amazing resource. Let's go out there and catch some great fish and have some great food too. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, check out some of our other great videos, including how to make your own smoker from a file cabinet and how to catch catfish using bluegill. If you like what you see, click subscribe to get new videos every week. Thanks for watching.